morning and welcome to Light Talks. Yes, you. I am so glad that you joined me. My name is Nakima Light, licensed clinical social worker, and today we are starting a new series, y'all. Oh man, I'm so excited for navigating body image. Good morning! Good morning! Now, this is not going to be your average conversation on body image. So I encourage you to lean in, take notes, do some reflection and begin to come on a journey with me. And let's talk about how we can reclaim our bodies for God's glory. Of course, there are endless messages on the body, our body female or male that impact us and shape our view of body image. But I'm going to be talking about that over the course of this series. Today, I'll focus on my journey, some messages that I've, I've heard and that have shaped and impacted me over the course of my journey, as well as where it all started. And that's my favorite part. So make sure you stay tuned to the end. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and join me for the ride. So my journey started of memories shaping my body image right around early adolescence. And I'm an only girl. Um, I have two older brothers that I grew up with and looking up to them, I often wanted to be with them, play with them, look like them, dress like them, have their friends. And the labels of tomboy, were one of the first things that were shaping my body and my body image. And I think it's so important for us to talk about because if we're honest, most of the time we're getting those messages from our parents first. How we see ourselves, how we see our bodies are shaped first from our nuclear family and in the home before we're even going to school or having access to social media. And I learned from a young age that what I decided to put on my body impacted the way that I showed up or was seen in the world. And what I decided was inappropriate or not girly enough. And I think that that impacted my view on what female or what showing up as a female meant so early. So right around the time when I started junior high school or high school, I was seeking a sexy body. Now, let's be honest, your girl was flat in the front and in the back, okay? Straight down the sides, no hips lying there. <laughs> One of my friends literally used to call me SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, I did not like that name, but it was fitting. And me seeking a sexy body was attached to having curves and having the attention or the approval of the opposite sex. And you know, the thing was, my friends or my peers around me that were female, they had the body all. And it made me feel like, well, what do I bring to the table? Charisma? <laughs> and it began to shape the way that I saw my body. And it began to shape the way that I interacted with others. That was a tricky phase because in that time of development, teenagers often are not thinking about my body will not always look that way. And it feels as if my body will always be that way. So a couple years later, um, walking into young adulthood, there were curves that were being established. But because of the previous season where that's what I was seeking or that's what I was searching for, I took that opportunity to flaunt my body. And I was like, yes, it's finally here. Look at me. And while in college, what I decided to wear or not wear was based on those views of my body image. My body image was attached to the attention that I can get as a result of what I wore or what I didn't wear. And I understand now that that's not the healthiest way to show up with my body, but it was the first time that I felt my body was powerful and that my body can speak. 
Do you know that your body speaks? Like our intellect, our soul, our spirit has a power and a place, but we also are encased in a body and that body communicates to the world. So as I continued my journey, the interesting thing is I got saved at around 22 years old. I recently graduated college after being a party girl, doing all of those things. And the way that I viewed my body was now being shaped by a new environment in the church. And guess what? Those messages weren't the most helpful either. So I went from the culture that said, show me your body, to a new culture that says, oh my goodness, cover your body up. It's a problem. It's a distraction. And it was confusing. I knew that my body inherently was innocent. It hadn't done anyone anything, yet that's what I was being told. And those things began to shape my body image in the season where I started my faith journey. And I don't know if you're anything like me, that that impacted my walk, that impacted how I showed up in my faith and with others. So I'm so grateful that I'm still learning and journeying through those processes. And I'm really excited about where I am now, but the journey has impacted and changed and seasons have come and gone with even how I view my body. Now, of course, the journey continues, but I share that with you because I encourage you to think about your narrative, your journey, your story on body image and how things have changed from year to year or season to season or even from experience to experience. Now, we hear messages internally and externally about our body and our body image. And I want to focus more on that in video number two. Make sure you stay tuned. And um, today I would say my internal messages and my external messages fought for power in how I would view my body. Was it good? Was it bad? Was it sexy? Was it acceptable? Was it not enough? All of these different messages plagued my mind, consciously or unconsciously. In my faith journey now, just thinking about this concept, the Lord started to speak to me about body image and where I am now. And I want to share with you what the Lord was saying. He asked me the question, do you know where it all started? And I was like, no. But, you know, most of the time those are rhetorical questions because he's going to tell you the answer. <laughs> and he brought me to Genesis and showed me the creation story where he decided that he wanted to create man from the dirt. And he created a living soul and it was good. And he put that man to sleep. He then took out of man, out of his rib, um, and fashioned woman and it was good. Now everyone's chilling, everyone's naked, everyone's enjoying the glory and the presence of God. And then <laughs> we get to chapter three in Genesis where we read about the sinful. And I want to read Genesis 3 verses 7 through 9. This is the amplified version and this is after they have decided to eat the forbidden fruit. And it reads, then the eyes of the two of them were opened. That is, their awareness increased, and they knew that they were naked. And they fastened fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool afternoon breeze of the day. So the man and his wife hid and kept themselves hidden from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Now let's look at this together. We see that God created our bodies, that he had a purpose and intention and function for each and every aspect of our bodies. 
and we were naked and unashamed. The interesting thing that I was able to see when I was reading this text is after they had sinned, there was a decision to cover up. And I thought it was interesting that they didn't cover up the thing they sinned with, the fruit. They didn't cover up their mind, their intellect. They covered up their bodies. Now, I know so many times when we read this text, we're looking at the impact of sin on our soul and on our spirit man. But I think it's important to also see the impact of sin on our physical body and the impact that it'll have on our body image. Now, our body after sin was introduced to shame and their response to feeling shame and seeing their nakedness was to hide themselves from each other and from God. And I think that that's so interesting where they decided to cover themselves with fig leaves. I'm not sure how big or small those are. And we saw, see so many illustrations of Adam and Eve with these fig leaf coverings over their genitalia area. The scriptures don't actually say that. I guess they imply that. I'm not gonna say that for sure. But what I do know is that they decided to cover parts of their body and then hid from the presence of the Lord. Now, in God's act of redemption and love, he comes and he asks this question, where are you? Now, I don't know if it's rhetorical or not. We know God is all knowing. He knows exactly where they are. But I'm curious to know if we've been hiding aspects of our body, aspects of ourselves because of shame. I'm curious to know if God's question can call you out of hiding, call you out of shame and bring you back into redemption. You see, he took an adequate covering and made for them and covered them actually and restored them, but also removed access from the garden. And I think that there was still an impact of shame on the body. So I have this question for you. <laughs> what type of fig leaf coverings are you using for your body in your body image? Is it flaunting your body? Is it hiding your body? Is it being ashamed of your body? Is it attempting to fix your body? I'm not sure what that is for you, but I encourage you to unpack that. Seek a journey of having your body reconciled back to God. I love you so much and make sure that you tune in for part two of Navigating Body Image. Now go forth and shine your light.